time with Herman and Sharon. Okay, we got the doors open today. Yes, you're always changing things. <laughs> I I, I've do, learned to go go with it. Just do, go with it. Do you remember a few years ago, many I few years ago, <laughs> we were walking around London, England. Yes, we were. And it, we, we walked so much. I I mean, I walked her legs off. Actually, <laughs> you we were lost trying to find our way That's back the, to yeah, the hotel. But, but I, I just I mean I just love the architecture, the buildings. Mm -hmm. Uh, we went to see the Phantom of the Opera That's and the right. oldest theater, I think, mm -hmm. in the world. Could be. I don't know for sure, but it was beautiful. And and we were sitting there looking through the programs. This actually happened, looking through the programs like this, and somebody comes up and leans on this seat in front of us. <laughs> and I look up and I said, hello. And he goes, I don't want to bother you, <laughs> but I watch your program. And this is in London, England. And I go, whoa, yes. are we in... Tampa or we in London? It's, it's amazing. It's a small yeah, world, isn't it? It is, really. Small but, world. But didn't we love the uh, Buckingham Palace? All of Everything. The, everything. It's just beautiful. Um, Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. Remember the guy preaching the gospel? Because you, you saw the, the Yeah, the that queen? was a trooping of the guards or something that's called. Colors or something. Trooping of colors. That's yeah. what it is. And so everybody was uh, lining up, and this guy was out front, older man, preaching to the crowd. I mean, I mean, it was great. It was like watching John Knox. Yeah, you know? I mean, or, 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 it was great. Or, or the Wesley brothers. I mean, it was, the Queen and everything. And I mean, I mean, that was a pure. Why gospel. are we talking about this today? Because <laughs> I have. Glad you said that, honey. Yes. I have a young lady. She is really young. Yes, very pretty too. Joe Noddington, and she travels all over obviously the world she left a few days ago from Heathrow Airport mm -hmm. landed in Miami speaking in Bradenton speaking all over and she's gonna be speaking in this area and now she's speaking on it's time with Herman and Sharon that's right and that's I good. hope that you will hear her accent more than mine okay <laughs> i'm sure you will because <laughs> i love to hear the accent. joe nottington join us over here and, and Thank I, you. I gotta i gotta take your hand and take a look in our window see how oh my goodness see how making you feel at home big ben can, can, the can houses you, of parliament can you folks at home see it? yeah they can see that they can yeah see yes have a seat the right city there of london they're going to serve breakfast in just a moment okay <laughs> actually she thinks we have the accent not her yeah i know i know <laughs> Do you, like right. your, do you like your eggs over easy? Well, I had to learn what that meant <laughs> when I came here, but I do like my eggs over easy now that I know what that means. That's right. So, so how, how do you, in England, what is the, the normal breakfast? If well, you were to go to a restaurant. If you were to go to a restaurant, then you'd have what we call a full English breakfast, mm -hmm. and you'd have bacon and eggs and sausage, and maybe some tomato and mushrooms. You wouldn't be having pancakes. You wouldn't be having waffles. You wouldn't be having grits or any of these yeah, things. Okay. okay. <laughs> but um, yes, that would be a full English breakfast. Yeah. So, Sounds good. So you were born and raised where? I was born and raised in the north of England in a little market town that is very, very old. And I mean, I, it's beautiful. Oh, stunning. Like the stunning. stone buildings and everything? Absolutely. It's old, it's quaint, uh, it's pretty, it's cold. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and Outside cafes? Yes. Oh. Well, mm, no, no. Not, maybe, not maybe, maybe one or two chairs okay. for those who can brave it <laughs> on the one day of summer <laughs> uh, yeah. a year, you know. Yeah. But then I moved to London when I was in my early 20s after I finished college. So I've okay. been in London a long time. Where did you now. go to college? I went to Manchester University, which is halfway between where I was living and where I am living now, sort of halfway down the country. I was making my way south, you see. <laughs> you and your husband, Paul, are, are a pastors of the Harvest Church in London, England. That's right. And we have a wonderful church there, very multicultural. We have about 40 different nationalities. Wow. And you know, about 20% of our people have been saved out of Islam. Really? Yes. Bless you. So God is doing a great work. Well, he's wow. using you guys. And he's moving in his glory. I pray for the Muslims every morning. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Every. Praise God. That, that, you know how they look they're on their prayer rugs yeah. five times? Yeah. And I say, Lord, mm -hmm. may they see 
a vision of you yes. your nail prayer stands in your feet and your side Amen. and may they see that this God is alive. Yes. The one they're serving is dead. Yes, that's right. And many have those supernatural visions of yeah. Jesus Christ oh. and it's amazing. Wow, so and, wonderful. And Ben and Abby, do you love them? Oh my goodness. <laughs> if there are two people that melt my heart, it's almost like the older they get, the more they've got me. How old are they? My son now is 17 and he's six foot three. Oh my And goodness. my daughter is 16. They're just 18 months apart. Is your hubby tall? He is, but my son is taller. So he's wow. the tallest in the family now. And they're wonderful children. Yeah, I love them very much. Now, how does this work when, you're fl when mama is flying all over the world? Yeah. Well, you know, I remember a day when I was actually in the air on my way to Pakistan about to minister. And I was having a big to-do. That's the only way I can put it with God. Mm -hmm. Because I was feeling that I was away too much. And then God challenged me and he basically said to me do you trust me or not mm -hmm. and I ended up having an encounter in the air wow. and I said to the Lord on three on three conditions I will go anywhere you send me for any length of time condition number one that my husband is so happy with me as a wife that he feels that our marriage is great and that he's the one sending me that was condition number one Condition number two, that my son is strong, confident, doing well. And number three, that my daughter is secure and happy and well. I said, Lord, on those three conditions, mm -hmm. I'll go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I have seen the hand of God on my children, on our marriage. My husband's a strong, anointed, amazing man of God with a great ministry. But he is my greatest encourager. That's so. Great. You know, home is great. And now, if people, because they're going to hear your book today, and they're going to see your website and everything on how they can get a hold of you and your books and the whole thing, could they have you come to their churches? I mean, absolutely. She will come if your auditorium is ten thousand plus. <laughs> just, just, just joking with you, but I mean. So they could get a hold of you. Yes, everything is there on the website, and um, in this season, God has been very clear that I'm in this season only to minister in the UK and the US. So I'm turning down every invitation in ev every other nation in this season mm. because of what God is wanting me to establish here. You've got, you to be on the, you've got to be on the Hillsong stages. Have you seen that program? I have seen that program. I mean, they've got their own yeah. network now. They certainly do. Um, you, you'd yeah. fit there just like <laughs> a glove. Were you raised in a Christian home? No. Joe, how did no. you come to know the Lord? So my, my upbringing was quite traumatic. I was raised in a dysfunctional family and really life was very difficult. We were a middle class family, so we all put on a lovely smile yeah. and pretended that all was well. And it was the only family I knew, so I sure. thought it was normal. Yeah. But age 12, I had my first encounter with the Lord. I went away with my school on a Christian holiday that just someone had packed me off on one of the one of the six formers one of the high school older girls said you need to go off on this holiday and off I went and I first met the Lord there and by age 15 I'd been filled with the Holy Spirit I'd read the Bible cover to cover and I was now on fire for God and gradually the rest of my family got saved as well oh that's Goodness wonderful gracious yeah. so you talk about guard your heart yes above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Yes. And that's your whole idea here. It really is, because... This is such an easy read. Praise God. You know, it's not like, okay, I'm going to get deep into... I mean, it is, it is revealing. Yeah. You see, even in the church, we, we say we believe certain things, but in reality we don't. We think... But it's our gifts, our talents. We think it's maybe who we know. Mm -hmm. We think it's our education or our upbringing that will determine how our life turns out. But the Bible is really clear that it's the state of our souls. Yeah. Now, here's the deal. You see, in this life, God himself told us that it was going to be tough, that we'd face persecutions. Mm -hmm. It says in the book of Job that man is born to trouble. Yeah. Jesus himself promised that we'd be betrayed, let down. And so 
Life is tough. Yeah. We go through difficulties, disappointments, we get hurt. And yet what we normally do as Christians, often because we love God, and other times because we don't know what else to do, is we just dust ourselves down, we toughen up and we carry on, but carrying sadness with disappointment on the inside, really wounded by hurtful words and different things. And you see, this is the thing. Our hearts are getting hurt. We are feeling worn down and weary and tired and discouraged. And yet it's that heart that's sad, that's down, that's discouraged that will determine how our lives turn out. Yes. And so this book is all about allowing God to shine his light into the depths of our innermost being and highlight those hidden corners of our souls where we're still carrying yeah, you wounds. Yeah, I love this from your book. He fashions the heart individually. Yes. Okay. You know, the way God showed me one day, I was in worship and God started to show me that just as you've got thousands of different landscapes across planet Earth, you've got desert, you've got forest, you've got rivers, you've got mountains. So every single one of our hearts is unique. And it's not only unique, the Bible says in Psalm 64 verse 6, it says the inner thought and heart of man are deep. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're unique, but they're so deep. And the truth is we don't really w know what's going on inside of our hearts very often. Mm -hmm. you, you, uh, I love this, and get your book because yeah. again, I'm just pulling out these little bullets but th th they stood out to me while I'm reading your book. So right. I had to jot them down yeah. to kind of uh, have you emphasize. Uh, you talk about the heart knower. He sees every sigh of your soul. Yes. He sees every, s so you just talked about what, what many of us, in fact, you probably described 50% yeah. of the audience when you were talking about these things that we just carry on. Yeah. And we've got yeah. these dark things yeah. that are still hanging on and we're trying to look good, yeah. smile good, yeah. react good, but when we sit down alone, we're not good. No, and, and you know, I would even say I think it's more than 50%. Wow. You know, when I see the responses when I minister at conferences, most people are really hurting and some of the time they don't even realize. But when yes. you look over the audience when you're up there on the platform yeah. and you're looking at it, you're making yeah. eye contact, yeah. do you sense this is this is reaching oh my goodness very often when i do an altar call at the end of ministry and i've been ministering it might be on trauma it might be on disappointment it might be on the wounds that we don't realize we're still carrying from childhood i would say that it's very normal for 90 percent of an audience or a congregation to respond to an altar call 90 percent you see mm. We go through stuff, and th this, is, this is the interesting thing. You talked about the heart knower. Let me tell you why we need a heart knower, the heart knower. Yes. And in fact, it's one of his names in Scripture. Because you see, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah that the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? In other words, you know, that word deceitful, what does it mean? Our hearts lie to us. They tell us we're strong and fine and well, when really on the inside, we're insecure, we're feeling rejected. And you see, the Bible then says, who can know his own heart? And it says, I, the Lord, search the heart. Well, the only time I ever need to search for anything is when there could be a whole load of different places that something could be hidden. Even God has to search to find what's inside our hearts. And yes, he sees the hidden sighs, mm -hmm. the sadness. You know, it's really interesting, that scripture that says that the heart of man is deep, it says the inner thought. Well, if you look in the Hebrew there, it actually, the word inner is heart. So it's saying the heart thought and heart of man are deep. So we think in our heads, but then there are thoughts so deep in our hearts 
that sometimes don't even have words but they come out with a sigh and it's just this feeling of gosh life's too much you, you say think of your soul as your headquarters yes so you know we can walk in to think of a huge corporation and you walk into the headquarters and there are different people in different places all doing different things well you see our souls are so complex and the way one time god showed me the heart of man is i saw this vault and in this vault were rows and rows of filing cabinets i mean as far as the eye could see each filing cabinet with three drawers, each drawer with different folders, and in each folder a different file. And the Lord said to me, contained in each one of those files is a memory, a sentiment, a word that was spoken that hurt, a sadness, a disappointment. And so often those drawers are shut. And not just that, even the, the door of that vault is shut. And we've got all these things on the inside that are just causing us to be weighed down, to feel heavy hearted. And you see, the honest truth is God wants to reach into the depths of people's innermost beings and he wants to take the pain away. He wants to reach into those places where we've had these dreams and it all crashed around us and we've got the heaviness of disappointment. He wants to reach in, take the sadness, the disappointments, and he wants to minister so that we can have this lightness in our souls. So that 90%, they yeah. recognize at that invitation yes, that they, they do. had this locked up. Yes, they do. They, they recognize that, you, you know Wouldn't what? you think that we would, we would go, I don't want this anymore, but we still hang on to it? I don't even think it's quite that. I think it's that people don't know what to do with it. Let me give you the example. Disappointment's a good one. We all know that if we're carrying unforgiveness, even though it's hard to forgive, we know what we're supposed to do with it. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to forgive. But what are we supposed to do with disappointment? People don't know what to do with it. They don't know what to do with a betrayal. You know, maybe in a church somewhere, there was a horrible split that just broke their hearts. They felt let down by their leader, or maybe a leader felt let down by their people. And we don't know what to do with certain hurts. And this is the thing, what do we do with disappointment? What do we do with betrayal? And so rather than dealing with it, we end up being weighed down mm -hmm. and actually living our lives a little bit differently. And therefore, you see the Bible says that we're supposed to be led by the Spirit of God. But too often we're being led by pain because we're trying to avoid telltale signs that might bring us back to something that once hurt before. Wow. You talk about the human spirit, anxious spirit, sorrowful spirit. Yeah. And you talk about the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. Yes, one of my favorite scriptures <laughs> in Proverbs 20. You see, my spirit, this is what the Bible says. It says, the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord shining into the inner depths of the heart. So. Our spirits are like a window that allow the Holy Spirit to shine his torch into our hearts to reveal the things that have been trapped inside, old memories, old experiences that have been weighing us down. And that's very often, Herman, what happens in, even as people read, I've heard people, I remember a man telling me I was reading and suddenly the Holy Spirit brought me back to a memory of when I was just a little boy something like fourth grade and, and the bullying that happened. And he said he realized that it was back then that he shut down his heart because he felt so humiliated and made decisions. I'm not going to allow people to hurt me like that. And it, as an adult, he realized he'd become very tough. And God brought him back, healed his heart, and, and it changed the nature you know, of his very marriage. It does come back again. That's the, that's the problem, though. I mean, we, we ask the Lord to, to help us with it, to uh, take control of it, but then before we know it, those thoughts are back again. So it's a kind of a continual... It's uh, interesting you say that's that. That's why she let travels me, a lot. <laughs> let, me, let me be really honest. The things that I've been really healed of, I don't think about them anymore. I mean, you know, let, let me get very real. 
My daughter died in the year 2000. People will tell you that you can never recover from the loss of a child. But God reached his hands into the depth of my pain. He did the same for my husband over a period of about a year. I went through supernatural healing encounter after supernatural healing encounter. And God took every shred of sadness away. Now, here's the deal. You know, a few years later, after God had healed my heart, I could see my own children that I went on to have, because at the time, my daughter, when she died, she was our only child. Mm. Now, we were then able to experience our children being sick without being terrified they were about to die. Her birthday can come and go. The anniversary of her death can come and go. And from the depths of my heart, with all honesty, I can tell you, all I feel is gratitude that God so deeply healed me, but he didn't stop there. You see, the deep hurts that we truly surrender and allow him to do a very real healing work he doesn't just take our pain away. This is how God said it to me. He said, Joe, I've turned your river of pain into a spring of healing. So I don't feel any sadness about my daughter who died or about my dysfunctional childhood. The things that he really heals don't come back. It's a structural healing on the inside that leaves us feeling truly restored. And you see, this is what the Bible promises. Jesus said, I heal the brokenhearted. And that doesn't mean putting a Band-Aid on or teaching us coping mechanisms. It means that he goes into the very root of the pain, takes it away, pours in his healing love. And so that we now have new memories and a fresh perspective. So if you still, see if you're listening and and you still, you've given it over to the Lord many times and it still comes back. Does that mean that you, the healing really wasn't there in the first place? I'm so glad you asked that, Sharon. It really does mean that. It means you brought it to the Lord because you so desire to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, my heart is with those people. But you see the ministry God has called me to bring to this nation and the reason I'm willing to leave the three human beings I love more than anyone else and be here is because I want people to know that God can completely heal those hurts that we think we need to carry forever. He can take the pain away mm -hmm. and make us new. And he's done it for me, for my husband, and for countless others, as you, people have read the books and, and, and as we've ministered. You, you talk about the power of tears in the book. Yes. Yes, and let me and tell for you. For example, you use David, Joseph, Jeremiah. Paul the Apostle, yes. And this is the thing. We can cry. We can cry all night long and wake up feeling as hurt as ever. Because there's a difference between pouring out our pain in the presence of God and crying bitter, sad tears. Now, when mm -hmm. we reach that place, you see, the Bible calls Jesus our wonderful counselor. The Bible says in Lamentations chapter 2, verse 19, it says, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. So what do we do when we pour out our hearts? What do we do with a counselor? We tell them the deepest issues on the inside that hurt. So, you know, if, if I've gone through a horrible betrayal at church and I feel like a leader has just ripped my heart apart, apart and I'll get into the presence of God and say, Father, I... I that hurts so much. Why would she do that to me? Of all people, I gave my very best to her and she just trampled over my heart. I'm telling God from the deep of place of my heart what hurt and I'll be speaking about the pain. And as I do, tears are gonna flow. I'm pouring out my heart like water in his presence. And you see what happens is I pour out my pain, but it doesn't stop there. And this is something I talk about in this book. After we've poured out our pain, we then need him to pour in his healing love. He fills back up that vacuum where the pain's been taken away. And that's when we can start to experience structural healing. We have about three minutes. That's your camera. Right. Somebody yeah. needs 
a message from you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't know what you have gone through, but I know right now that you're sitting in your home and you are feeling so broken and such a sadness. But I want you to know that not only did the Lord see Amen. the things that were said and done that hurt you so much, he didn't just see, but he's saying to you that I'm here now to heal. Just like it says in Luke chapter 5, verse 17, the presence of the Lord is here to heal you. Yeah. Mm. The enemy has tried to lie to you and tell you that you're gonna have to carry this sadness with you to your grave. But I'm here to let you know that he's the one that is able to take your pain away. And right now he's saying to you, pour out your heart like water. Wherever you are right now, just shut your eyes in the presence of the Lord. You might wanna fall to your knees if your knees allow you and talk to the Lord. Tell him what you went through right now. Tell him, God, it hurt. Why did he do that? Why did she do that? Why did I have to suffer like this? As you start to tell the Lord what you went through, his healing love is invading your heart right now and bringing his love in a new way that you've never experienced. He loves you. And the other thing I want to say to you is that the healing of the heart is a journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is not a one-time encounter. Yeah. In fact, my healing journey went on for the, the, at the beginning, for, for between somewhere between one and two years. And so don't be discouraged when you feel little bits of sadness, but stay on your healing journey. Make sure, to, if you can, get hold of this book and allow God to take you on that structural journey to real transformation. He's able, he loves you, and he wants to set you free so that you can fulfill every ounce of your God-given destiny. It's not too late. Have a Amen. prayer with them right now. Would you yeah. do that? Yeah, Father, right now, I yes. pray for each one. Yes. Mm. Lord, you know the different situations and circumstances that each one is living in right now. And I see abusive marriages, I see cold marriages where you feel like you wake up every day beside somebody who doesn't even really love you. And the Lord is saying, I see, I know. And right now he's telling you, I am the way mm -hmm. to complete healing and restoration. Father, I speak your blessing yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Wow. Powerful. Thank you. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joe. It's an honor. My goodness. Yeah. Jesus Christ is the answer to every need you may have. God bless you.